right here in this picture or these pictures we've got some right old delicious grub but what do they contain and what do the things that are contained actually do in the body and that's our study of components of food. We're going to look at different types of nutrients and we're going to sort of analyze what they are and what they do. So let's get cracking, right? We're going to talk about carbs or carbohydrates. Now, again, I am very aware that you are um, studying your carbohydrates in a fair chunk of detail in your biology studies, probably, okay? So I'm going to rely a little bit on that information. And by far the most important thing I can say to you is that carbohydrates, let's say starches, which are the insoluble form, um, they are effectively a form of energy. And that is ultimately why the human body needs them. So the, the, the carbohydrate consumption is really largely to do with energy. We also know that once consumed, they are broken into sugars, or let me be specific and say simple sugars. A great example is glucose, okay, which we know, of course, is a reactant in our uh, respiratory, uh, in our respiration uh, reactions. Okay, so that's useful. So let's put glucose in there. So carbo carbohydrates are a source ultimately of, of glucose. That's good. Um, but we can also say that they're stored. Let me write that better. They are stored in small amounts. Gordon Bennett, they are stored in small amounts. So we are able to consume and store a little bit of carbohydrate, and we tend to store carb. Well, we do store carbohydrates in the form of a product called glycogen, and this glycogen is stored in both the liver and in the muscle tissue. Okay, so just be aware of that. But this is a limited store; it's about two hours worth of energy, so it's not a huge amount. And as we've just mentioned. Um, the sugars that we derive from carbohydrates can be used in both anaerobic and aerobic processes and that is because they are broken down to form glucose now where do we get this from well we could argue well here we go we get it from for example bread um, we might get it from certain uh, fruits and vegetables and we've got some potatoes in here for example which are quite carbohydrate uh, rich but we also get it from things like rice uh, grains, uh, pasta, of course pasta is um, wheat based uh, normally and we've also got things like bread, these are all excellent sources of carbohydrates so that's what we need those for. Now let's get on to this evil stuff of fats and I'll turn on my evil voice. Now you will know from your biology studies probably that we refer to fats the, as lipids. Lipids are the insoluble uh, molecule that we ultimately break down into glycerol. And in, well, let me put this in. We break it down into glycerol and fatty acids. You probably know this from your biology, right? So it's this stuff here, these, this glycerol and fatty acids that we can use. And you probably even know that glycerol looks a bit like that. And our fatty acid tails look a bit like this, right? You probably know that's what a lipid looks like. I'm not going to get into detail here. But we can ultimately use this unit and each of these units. Okay, and we can use those for a couple of different things. And that's what we're going to talk about here. So we can use them for energy. Okay, so that's interesting. Fat is a form of energy in the body. So if we derive, for example, some fat from this oil, let's say it's vegetable oil for argument's sake, um, that can be used for energy. Fantastic. It's also used for insulation. Okay, so effectively thermal regulation and body heat control. But also we should be aware that fat can be stored. And if you consider where fat is stored, generally speaking, fat is stored under the skin. Okay, so we get that kind of subcutaneous or under the skin fat. And fats typically are used for aerobic respiration, or they are used for, so this energy is used for aerobic process. So where do we get fats from? Well, basically we get them from animals and we get them from plants. Okay, so animals and plants are the source of our fats. Now again, I'm not going to get into the biology of why plants uh, store oils. You guys know photosynthesis probably it produces uh, gl uh, glucose and it, it has to be stored in different formats. And anyway, I'm not going to get into that. But that is where we get our fats from. And we should be aware that we've got some healthier and some unhealthy examples. Now, I want to talk to you about proteins. This is where like biology gets super fascinating or our PE studies get super fascinating. Let's talk about proteins. Now, proteins, and again, you'll, you'll have a working understanding, I'm sure. They are what we describe as amino acid chains. So, when we consume them, whether it's in a piece of fish, in a nut, whether it's in a piece of meat, something like that, when we consume these amino acid chains, we can't actually absorb amino acid chains, but we can break them down into individual amino acids and absorb them. And what are they then used for? Well, they are ultimately rebuilt into something else, and they're used for growth. 
they use for repair. And just trust me, some of these are absolutely fascinating processes. Um, the only thing I'd say, say is that we get a very small amount of energy out of protein as well. So there is some energy there, that's an E, um, but it's a very small amount of energy, so just be aware of that. We're, we're almost there, guys. Let's focus on vitamins. Um, and by the way, proteins, I should have said, I, sh I should have made that point. With proteins, we're talking about uh, meat, we're talking about fish, uh, we're talking about pulses and nuts and legumes. That's where we're going to get our proteins from. Now, we were going to mention here vitamins. I think I changed pink there. Never mind. Let's cover that up. Vitamins. Okay, now with vitamins, they're really essential for body function. Okay, body function and health all right so that's what we need our vitamins for right? and especially i think we're focusing here on vegetables um but really a couple of points i'd make for you if we take on board vitamin c for example which we get from certain fruits particularly cit citrus fruits that's going to really help with the immune system if we take on let's say the whole range of b vitamins there's lots of them by the way these really help with what we describe as cell metabolism the chemical processes uh, within cells okay so they're really important for various um, and varied um, processes in the body and we get them largely from vegetables in the main there are a couple of exceptions but vegetables in the main are the source of our vitamins let's keep this going through to the end we're almost there i want to talk to you about minerals they often sort of lumped in with vitamins to be perfectly honest but with minerals a couple of important things to say first of all they are stored in the skeleton now they're stored in small quantities so let's give a couple of examples of what this could be they're stored in the skeleton and we would be talking about things like iron for hemoglobin let me write this out uh, fully for you hemoglobin so we've got these heme groups on the hemoglobin that's this where we get that oxygen carrying capacity on red blood cells and iron is required from that okay we get iron from all kinds of sources our leafy green vegetables we get also from uh, from liver if we that sort of thing as well for example but also we could talk about phosphorus now it might be phosphorus what you might have even seen phosphorus sort of on fire or go bang in a science lab um but phosphorus is really healthy healthy for muscle and muscle function and reducing muscle pain we could also put in the example of calcium for bones i mean we could talk about it for teeth as well but calcium for bones we get lots of calcium from dairy products for example we're very ne nearly there guys last two things fiber as a component of food fiber is really important to digestion so kind of the roughage of things like uh, vegetables and skins and things that are close to the surface of vegetables are often contain lots of fiber for example but just be aware they contain no energy okay so their job really is to aid digestion i'm not going to get into the action of the large intestine but they're important in there so just be aware uh, of that and finally guys my very last point of course a healthy diet or the other component of a diet is fluid or water and this helps with hydration for obvious uh, for obvious reasons i mean again you guys are probably studying your osmosis process for animal cells in in concentrated and dilute solutions in biology but hydrate it's really important that we have water and that importance is because it aids cell function so if we take on for example uh, respiration in muscle cells or contraction in muscle cells it's really important there's sufficient water for that to take place those are our components of food lots of details a fairly chunky tutorial there but nothing that should be uh, considered as sort of impossible to learn or overly difficult get stuck in